want to discuss how you calculate weighted average on the HP B2 Plus financial calculator. Now, weighted average is a common calculation in business and finance. And what it means is, is that some observations will count more than other observations. Now, if we were trying to figure out the average weight of the students in a classroom, we just have everybody write down their weight and we type it into a spreadsheet like Excel and then we'd find the average by adding up all the weights and dividing by or all the pounds that people weigh and dividing by the number of students in the classroom. But sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes we want things to um, be counted more. For example, um, in a class you might have homework, a midterm, and a final. Well, the homework might count 10%, the midterm might count 30%, and the final would count 60%. So you can't just add up all those averages and then find the course average for the average grade for the course. You have to weight them, right? The final exam should count more than the homework and the midterm. The midterm should count more than the homework. So oftentimes we do this in all kinds of calculations, but especially in business and finance. So to do this, we use these keys on the financial calculator here. The input key, we're going to use the sigma plus key. So we're going to use those to put the data in. And then we're going to use the, actually it's the x bar w comma b um, key, which is right here um, under the 6 key to um, do the calculation. We're going to put in the X and Y data with X being the data we're interested in um, and Y being the variable we're weighting X by. So you got to do it in the right order otherwise you're going to get the wrong calculation or you're going to be weighting it incorrectly. So let's take a look at a, a common calculation here. Okay, Sometimes we're interested in the expected return for a stock. All right? We have a slow growth period which we estimate to be 10 percent and the return is minus 3 percent in that state of the world. We have normal growth which we think will be 75 percent of the time and the return is 12 percent and a high growth period which is 15 percent and the return is expected to be 20 percent. And so this is how you do the calculation, right? 10% times minus 3% plus 0.75 times 12% plus uh, 0.15 times 20%. You can also use the financial calculator here. So let me clear all the memory. And remember, this has to be X and this has to be Y. So I'm going to put in 3% minus 3% and you hit input and then you type in its corresponding information. You can put in 10%. You could actually put in 10, 75, and 15. It'll figure out it's 10%, 75. It'll add them up and then divide each one, this, by the total number. I'll just put in what we actually have, 0.1. And then you hit the sigma um, plus sign. So that tells us the first observation is in. The second observation would be 12% input and 75 percent chance that that happens. So now we have two observations and then the final observation is 20 percent input and 0.15 sigma x. If you want to check and make sure you put in the numbers correctly hit recall sigma plus and you can scroll through. See the first number is minus three if you hit a plus, it tells you that also the first observation is 10%. Right? Second observation is 12. Hit the plus sign, tells you that the probability I put in was 0.75. And the final 20% and 0.15. To calculate the average here, just hit this down shift key and this x bar um, w comma b and it turns out to be 11.7 percent, okay, which um, seems reasonable, right, someplace between minus 3 percent and 20 percent, right, should be um, 
pretty close to these higher numbers since this makes up 90% of the value, so that looks good. Let's try one more. Okay, suppose a college is interested in the average monthly rent that's paid. So they survey 350 college students at Blue Sky College and they find the following rent payments. 85 people paid $425, 70 people paid $550, 100 paid $625, 70 paid $650, and 25 paid $800. Now to do this calculation, this is a little more tedious. You actually have to add up all these numbers, which um, we said was 350, and to get the weight for the first for the first group of people who paid $425, you'd have to take 85 and divide it by 350 and multiply it by the 425. And then you take the 70 divided by the 350 and multiply it by 550, etc., etc. And you do it for all of these observations. Okay, much easier here on the this financial calculator because we just have to put this in as x and this in as y. It'll do this division for us. It'll do the multiplication and it'll do the add addition for you. So let's see if we can't put this in correctly here. Um, I cleared everything. 425 is the first x variable input and 85 is the number of people and then 550 is the amount of rent that the second group paid and there were 70 of them who paid that. The third group paid 625 input and there were a hundred of them and then we have what 650 input and there were 70 of those students and finally, there were some students living in some much nicer housing, paying $800 a month. Input. And 25. And if we want to calculate the average, so we've got five observations. That's what the five is here for. And let's see what the average is, the weighted average. 578.92. So about $579 is um, the average rent paid. So you can do this this way. Okay. It takes, it's a little more tedious. If you were doing it in an exam, it would be easy to make some mistakes here. Or you can use this HP um, calculator to do it for you.